The federal government will, from Saturday, February 1st, begin the implementation of 7.5% VAT adopted by the finance law. According to the government, the law will take effect after all the necessary administrative procedures are completed, especially the gazetting of the act by the finan Federal Ministry of Justice. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, confirmed the February 1st implementation date in Abuja at the inauguration of the board of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. She said the February 1st commencement date had put to rest every speculation regarding the takeoff date of the new VAT regime. The Minister said once a bill was signed into law, it would take effect immediately, but noted that there were certain administrative procedures and formalities to be finalized before commencement. Joining us live in the studio is a public affairs analyst, Bolaon Alajede. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Good morning. Yes, certainly. Now we know that the 7.5 increased VAT is going to start off, kickstart by February 1st. What's your take on this? Well, um, there is no perfect time to increase taxes. You don't want to pay more taxes. I don't want <laughs> Nobody to, wants to pay more taxes. Nobody wants to pay it. Uh, but at the same time, it's part of the reforms in the economy that we have to do. So it's a matter of when. We just have to make up our mind and start at some point. And that is exactly what we are doing right now. Um, the Finance Act is also not just about VAT increase, actually. It's a whole lot more. It's, it's a reform instrument that is a bit more holistic. Mm -hmm. um, the way VAT itself is structured is such as to minimize the impact on the lowest rung of the ladder. So that's why you have a long list of ex exclusions you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. on the program. But all the same, um, there's no way the inflationary effect of that uh, increase in VAT will not hit us. All right, we, uh, earlier we were having this conversation and then there was a bit of now it may help other state government, you know, implement the min new minimum wage. Do you see this really happening? Because at the end of the day, we still have situations where some states are unable to generate um, what they make in a whole year as their revenue. They are, you know, in terms of, they are, they are not able to generate the same thing in just one month. Mm -hmm. you know? State um, governors, the leadership of the state, have essentially over the years been distributors of wealth, not creators. Mm. So you go to Abuja every month to go and receive your allocation, mm -hmm. you bring it back, and that is what constitutes what most of them spend. There are states that depend on the federal government for as much as 90, 92% of the entire thing that they spend. So you can imagine what we're talking about. Expenditure way overrides what they generate. Way over. The, yeah. the, the, and, and that problem is still sitting there. That is the reality. This VAT increase will not correct that. But because at some point they complain that, oh, we don't have money, we won't be able to pay this new uh, wage, and that, that must have been why uh, <clears throat> part of the reasons why they start to be fast track and brought into the mainstream. So that those who are saying they will not be able to pay, 85% of this VAT goes back to those states and local governments. Local government. you know, so at least people should be able to hold them accountable now. If there's any state that says, uh, or that it's not paying, you say, but you got this, you're getting this money. This additional revenue is coming to you. So there's no basis for saying you cannot pay. You know. So are you suggesting that this would ease that you know, stress? prior expected stress from the different it, it will It will ease it from the point of um, because at the being end able of the day, to pay you know. <laughs> that, that minimum wage. But it doesn't solve anything substantially. The state are still fundamentally dependent. Because it still looks as though there will still be a very huge imbalance. We understand that states like Lagos generate about the highest IGR Correct. compared to other states up north as it were. So... <laughs> Don't you see this posing another kind of challenge? No, I think, I think the, the only challenge I see is they should make it a positive challenge for themselves. The states must look inward. Revenue generating is not just about taxes. It's about a whole lot more. Creating the right environment for businesses to thrive, mm -hmm. looking at solid minerals in your state, creating, making the labor, the people living in that state to even become a source of income. If I have a technology hub in, say, or your state, for example, 
I could, I could turn your state into an uh, education tourism kind of a state yeah. where people start coming for university education, where they come to, 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 to find programmers in, in my technology hub. And before you know it, you're making money. You're creating the right environment and you're making more money. You have states with extensive land opportunities that are not farming. They're not producing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're asking yourself, you have this size of land? So what is coming out of it? So the opportunities for revenue, it's not just about taxes, and it is high time that the states, northwest, east, and everywhere where we are, begin to look inward for revenue. All right, thank you so much, Bolan, for joining us and your time. That's all we can have for now. Thank you. Wow.